So um, it's Stereo Sonic. It's November 27th, I think. I was in the Ferry Corson tent. I was with a bunch of friends and doing my usual thing of just um, taking off my own and enjoying the music, enjoying the day. I was at the front of the stage, or near enough, and um, I looked over and I saw Renita looking at me, and so I sort of looked for a second and looked away. So I met Peter um, actually at a music festival at Stereo Sonic, where, you know, no relationships are ever formed or anything. I actually had a conversation with my friend the night before because we're having a conversation about how you can't meet any good men at music festivals or bars or clubs. So I said to her, how about if I do an experiment? Whoever asks for my number on the day, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give them my number and go on one date and we'll see how it goes. So while I was at Sirius Sonic, I was at Ferry Corston and literally Peter was standing alone by himself and I was dancing alone by myself and our eyes literally just like locked across the dance floor as cheesy as that sounds. And then I glanced back and she glanced at me very quickly and sort of glanced away again. Yeah, I walked over and started chatting to her. I had a very brief conversation about the DJs and you know, all that sort of thing. And then I said, oh, well, would you like to have coffee sometime where there's no alcohol involved or is, you know, a bit quieter and we can actually have a chat? And she said yes, and I got her number. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, there's a cute boy looking at me. Don't look at him, don't look at him. And then couldn't help myself, but I had to look at him again. And our gaze locked again, and then he came over and started chatting to me. I only spent about five minutes talking. He was a very smooth operator. Um, got my number and, and then he wandered off and I didn't see him the rest of the night. A couple of weeks later, or a week, sorry, a week later, I texted her and we, we met up in the garden. So. One other guy did ask for my number and I did give it to him. And so in the next couple of weeks, I had this date with this other guy, which was just horrendous. And then after that, I had the date with Peter. And just the contrast between the two was Amazing. It was interesting because after I sent a text to Renita say we should catch up for coffee after Stereo Sonic, she said yes and then she cancelled it the night before because she was sick and I was like, oh yeah, sure, she's sick. <laughs> um, but she was in fact sick and I remember wondering, oh, I'll try again, I'll try one more time, see if she's, um, she wants to go for coffee. Um, she did, I ended up ringing her. She, um, she said, cool, she'll go for coffee. So we met up in the garden. So that was technically our first date. We went and just had soft drinks at the garden in Leaderville and the conversation was just, it was incredible, it flowed, we had so many things in common and not just not just the simple things, not just the run of the mill sort of, oh yes, you read books, I read books, oh yes, we like the same movies. It was down to the values and principles and beliefs. We just had so many things in common. It was, I think, on that first date where where I suddenly, you know, where hope grew in me that maybe you can find worthwhile relationships <laughs> at music festivals. And we ended up having coffee and then staying, probably ended up being a couple of hours, so, and didn't really want the date to end, but I had to go for my brother's birthday party, so took off, but yeah, it went really well. So I made sure I asked her if I could see her again before the end of that. So the whole proposal, it's actually quite a long tale. I was in Kalgoorlie. The proposal's interesting because there are actually three rings involved in the proposal. Peter really wanted our engagement party to coincide with the first anniversary of the day we met. So yes, I already knew it was coming up, but I didn't know when, and I knew that it had to be in Kalgoorlie. And before all of that, Peter really had to ask my parents for permission. There's a whole story where I missed a flight because I was trying to get this ring resized that was made in India and this was the first ring and this was for the was supposed to be for the the proposal it didn't happen in time it went to India um, it didn't come back and then I was busy trying to get to the store to get the ring and then I found out it wasn't ready and so later on he called me and he seemed um a bit flustered and I was like, oh, you know, I tried to call you earlier, where were you? And he's like, oh yeah, I was at your parents' house. And then he stopped talking. I was like, what were you doing at my parents' house, Peter? And he was like, nothing. And I said, no, 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 what were you doing at my parents' house? And so I was very excited, um, but I still didn't know how he was going to propose. And then that weekend, he missed his flight to Kalgoorlie. I ended up going to the airport late, five minutes late. I couldn't get on the plane, so I couldn't propose that night. <laughs> I ended up using my grandmother's ring 
that night, or not that night, sorry, the next day, because I got another flight out. As soon as I got in the door, I proposed to Renita, and she very cheekily said no, and then said yes, of course, so. <laughs> I was sort of being expected to be proposed to that weekend, um, but it didn't happen. I went to meet him at the airport, and I was a bit worried that he would get down on his knees and make a scene, but fortunately he didn't. So when he came back to the apartment, there was no one else in the apartment at that stage, even though I was sharing with two other girls. Um, he literally dropped his bags on the floor, gave me a hug, and while we were hugging, he suddenly wrested himself out of my grip and dropped to one knee. I was like, oh my God, you're doing it now? Then I actually got the ring from India, which was even so a temporary ring. And then after a number of months, I ended up <laughs> getting her actual engagement ring, which is the one that she's wearing today and we got that from Smales and I then proposed again at the gazebo out in the Bayswater foreshore where it's a bit of a special place for us, so. <laughs> and he said, yes, Renita, I love you more than anything, will you marry me? And so at that point I said, yes, of course. That was <laughs> a bit of a long story, but that's pretty much how the proposals happened. <laughs> and he proposed with his grandmother's ring. He'd actually intended to get me a very specific ring to propose with. And so when I got back from Kalgoorlie and went to visit him at his place for the first time, then he, he presented me with that ring. So that was the second ring in the proposal. He took off a day from work and um, we went on a picnic. It was really funny. We had a lovely picnic down by the Bayswater foreshore, which is where we had a few of our earlier dates. I remember lying on our picnic blanket, having had a smorgasbord of picnic food. I remember saying, Peter, I think this is the most perfect day of my life. And not, not long after that, we went walking down by the foreshore to the gazebo, overlooking the water, and, and again, I felt like Peter let go of me. And I turned around and he was pulling my ring from his pocket on one knee, asked me to marry him again. And at that point, I was just like, you're such a cheese ball. <laughs> um, and got really excited and didn't actually say yes because I'd already said yes previously. And he said to me, Renita, you haven't said yes yet. I said, of course, yes. So that was, that was how he always intended to do it. And it was a perfect surprise. Probably one of the things I love most about Renita, she's got some backbone, you know, she's really strong, very um, dedicated and focused as well uh, in, in what she does. She wanted to be a doctor when she was three, um, which is pretty awesome to decide that you want to be a doctor when you're three years old and then become a doctor. He is the first man I've ever met who I truly respect and admire. Since the moment I met him, I always admired how, how articulate he was, how well poised he was, how um, confident he was, but not arrogant or brash. He's always able to have a really logical argument or debate. Um, she's, she's an impressive woman, you know. She's, she's awesome. You know, we just have so many of the same core values and that sort of thing. She, um, she's so, so very intelligent, emotionally intelligent as well. The way he comports himself, it's, it's always, it's just something to be respected. Really sharp and we just have the same sort of ideals about family and life, so it's really cool. Um, there's, in every way that I can, I can think of, we just, we just gelled for right from the start. He strives to be the best that he can be, not just at work, not just for his family. Um, he's determined to be the best person, will always work to better himself in every way. And again, that's not a quality you can find in, in any person. There's been so much growth and development from his hardships. I just really respect how he's, how he's grown into the man he's become. And that is the number one thing that I love about Peter is, is how much I can respect and admire him. He is incredibly generous with his time and generous and patient with me. He really embodies the, the value of, of love as sacrifice and he really would do anything for me. He, more than anyone that I know, forgives without, without hesitation, truly forgives. There's, once he's forgiven you, there is no resentment there. It's, it's gone. It's like any transgression that you've done is just, is just gone. And he never holds any bitterness. I've never met anyone that can love in that way. So I think our biggest <laughs> fight ever has been over how to wash socks appropriately. It was early on when we were first living together. Peter washes his socks already 
folded in, in pairs. Now the reason that happens is because I keep them together so that you don't end up with odd socks, right? So that was yep. the, just, it was just keep yep. them together, then wash them and I never unfolded them. So it wasn't really, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Because we only wear black socks. And so when, when you have lots of pairs of black socks, obviously it's easy to confuse which socks go with which, in which pair. I am of the belief that if you wash socks when they're folded, they don't get washed properly. So one day, um, I was taking the washing out and I had a pair of folded socks that Peter had put in the wash and a pair of unfolded socks that I had put in the wash. The folded pair of socks is still smelly. So I confronted Peter with this and I said, ha, I told you so, folded socks don't wash properly. And Peter insisted that it was because it was a pair of sports socks that they were particularly smelly and that it didn't matter that they were folded or unfolded um, in terms of you know, whether or not they washed properly. I got very upset at this because as far as I was concerned, here was proof that folded socks didn't wash properly. No, you got really upset. That was like afterwards. That was after we had the whole incident about the, the socks and, argue, you know, that argument about the socks, the, the test case was to prove by washing one pair that was, was together and one that wasn't and then comparing them. No, 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 but we didn't do that on purpose in the end. Oh, didn't we? No, no. Okay. We, we right. never ended up actually testing it because Peter wanted to know why I was so upset about you folded got very socks. upset. Um, yes, because, yeah, <laughs> because I was so upset because basically Peter dismissed my proof. It's like, that's not proof. And, and then I was like, yes, it is. And that was how the argument developed. <laughs> and I had my feelings really hurt because, um, well, I, I, this is why I got so upset. I, I felt like I was really hurt from him dismissing my proof as not proof. And, and then what happened? And then, and then Peter got really annoyed because he was like, why are you picking a fight with me over socks? And, and hence the <laughs> argument unfolded. So I don't think you can get much more ridiculous than that. <laughs> is, is the summary, yeah. So five years time, I think, well, oh, we will potentially have children by that stage, should have children by that stage. Yeah. You will be a consultant by that time, won't you? Pretty no, almost. I think I will be in advanced training, almost, yep. yeah. We'll probably have our first child. We'll probably have our first child, yep. And probably still be living in Cardinia at that time, potentially, yep. 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 The house will be landscaped and perfectly refurbished. Yes, as opposed me. to now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because you have to do something to occupy yourself while I'm studying. Yep. And I probably will be working in the same field, still doing Kung Fu, still training. Yeah. Yeah. I think in five years we just envisage that life will have settled down. Yes. Um, a bit and we'll finally have our routines and be able to come home to each other and, and just know, know what we're doing and not be rushing around frantically trying to organise a wedding. Which yes, it should be good. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, got to get through the wedding first. We can't just... wait for the wedding, sweetheart. Almost there. I know. So exciting. <laughs> Love Happy. you, baby.